Well, Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video with her and her daddy complaining about something. <laughs> Peace and blessings, you ugly mofos, and welcome to another episode of He Rants. I am your host, Felix Long Trousers. <laughs> Alright guys, no face cam today, but I had to make sure you guys hear the soothing, sensual sound of my voice. Because we got to talk about the Club Shay Shay interview with Monique, right? Mainly, honestly, we, we're trying to focus on the Monique and D.O. Hughley beef, right? Because, you know, it just got sparked back up and I'm I'm all here for it, right? And if those of you who want to know whose side am I on in this situation, you must not have been watching my content because you guys know I'm a strong misogynist, so I'm going with the guy, right? I don't even like D.O. Hughley. I'm going to keep it a band with you. Uh, some of the stuff he says, it sounds smart to a low IQ intellectual, but, um, you know, neither here or there, right? At the end of the day, we're men. Men have to stick together. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So we got to keep it. We got to keep it misogynistic, right? Um, but Monique got on Club Shay Shay. And she, you know, she's letting out her grievances and stuff, right? She saw Cat Williams get on there and she thought that, okay, maybe I can get as much love and publicity like, like Cat Williams got, right? Maybe I can right some wrongs and all that stuff, right? But honestly, based on how the interview went, it seemed like she was just complaining like a lot of young ladies do, right? I'm going to bring this up. I wasn't going to do it. But damn it, this is this seat. Tell, I say, you might want to have another look, example. This seat make you go truth. Tell it. No, <laughs> tell the damn truth. God damn it. Tell I, I'm telling you off the rip, <laughs> off off the rip. You already know lies are about to be spewed. Shout out to the guy Shannon Sharp. As you guys can see, he got the Atmos collab uh, Air Max ones. You know, like, like, yo, I, I gotta give the guy his props when it comes to the sneaker game. Let's keep going. Tell the truth it, because. Family is sacred. It's supposed to be. And we don't cross the line with family. Mm -hmm. And people begin to get comfortable to jump on the Monique bandwagon of Monique doing things wrong. And she doing this and she doing that. And there's a brother named D.L. Hughley. Yep. And until he take accountability, I won't let it go. What? Because. What would you get ready to say? I was going to say, what did DL do? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that voice went up, didn't it? DL is friend. He like, that's my friend. No, I, I, I've met DL on several occasions. I don't know DL like that. Okay. Do, I, do I know DL say like I know an earthquake? No. Do I know, uh, since I've interviewed Cat, had several conversations with him, do I know DL on that level? No. Right. See, when we say family is sacred, right. family is sacred. And we know that you don't cross the line when it comes to family. Correct. Right? I do DL's t uh, radio show. Yes. DL Hughley is not there. His team is there. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going forth, back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they say, <coughs> Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, sugar. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather? No. Okay. Now, Mona, you already you should have said I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute, we're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We're having a good time, okay. Shannon. Okay. okay. We. I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful black unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. Okay. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now. What, what, what was the answer, though? What, what was the answer? Which, which, which one would you? I'm just curious. Which one would you rather? I mean, she, listen. At the end of the day, man, this is this is a comedian we're talking about, guys. We're talking about a comedian. I would think that she'd be able to take a joke like that, you know, or a simple question like that. I mean, growing up in high school, I mean, we, we used to ask these questions all the time. 
You know what I'm saying? Would you rather this, this, this? Would you, would you rather... Uh, one thing that we used to say, like, yo, would you rather have a dude skeet on your face, let it dry, you know what I'm saying? Go to school for a whole, you know, the whole day, first, second, all the way seventh period and everything like that. Or let your mom get ran, ran through by the whole football team or something like that. It's just a joke. It's not even that serious. No one's going to be like, damn, you talking about my mom? Like, if somebody do, that dude is clearly nuts. You know what I'm saying? We have that level of rapport and friendship. Maybe he, maybe she wasn't really that cool with the staff. Maybe she wasn't cool with DL's whole production or something like that. I'm not sure, but I would think as a comedian, she'd be able to take that as a joke. You know what I'm saying? But it looked like, look like she a little, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like comedians nowadays are uh, way too sensitive. Let's keep going. Right now, who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh? they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh? okay. Huh? That is exactly what happened. Now, I say to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is... Man, if you don't shut this... <laughs> what does that have to do with... Up I asked you a simple, would you rather... Do what are you talking about uplifting the community? What the hell... Monique, what are you... I, I, I mean, shout out to Monique, man. She did bring out the whole situation when it came to the bonnets and everything. But, like, you're talking about uplifting the community. But it's like slim. Slim, relax. It's a simple question. Buzz Killington right here, son. And for those of you guys who don't know, this is why I say certain things, right? Certain things I don't like to talk to women about because they just can't take jokes. If this was a dude, if a dude had said this, if they had said this to another dude, there's a chance, maybe, who knows, maybe he could be soft and sensitive too. But even if it was a situation that you didn't like, you'd be like, okay, like, I don't like it. And it's, it's like, yo, don't ask me that type of question, you know. Don't you know? Leave my family out of it or something like that. Then it's over. If they respect it, they respect it. You feel me? And her name is Jasmine. How could you ask another sister that? Well, we just planned. I said, tell me the joke in that because I don't know what you're insinuating. Then you're involving people that have nothing to do with nothing. Like, what are y'all doing? So I said, I'ma call my brother. DL. I'm going to call my brother. I call D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby. Yeah. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to let him know Monique's going to be calling. Right. Like, this, it was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother, right? Yeah. Hey, D.L., yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team, and they wanted to play this game, Would You Rather? And it was like, Stupid, like asking me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his. So basically, you snitched. Basically, you snitched. <laughs> you crybaby snitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? What? You basically snitched. Well, actually, you know what? At the end of the day, if you wanna, if you wanna say your grievance, let yourself say your grievance, all right? Well, you still snitch. It wasn't that deep. It's not even that deep. This is one of those things after that you leave out. You might even tell your husband, like, look, this is the thing that they asked me, and that's it. You push it up, and like, oh, that was stupid. You push it off. You don't hold this that strong. It's not even that deep that you have to go to DL for this. Journey. I, I don't even know. What are, we, what are we talking about here? And his exact words, well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly. Standing on business, exactly. Hey, you ain't gonna tell me on my show and tell me what I'm gonna do. What are you talking about, son? <laughs> what the hell? I stand with my staff. It was a simple question. It's a joke. Relax. You're a comedian. You're supposed to be able to take this, but it looks like you soft and tender. You tender, I was about to call it tender dick, so I'd be like, yo, tender but JJ ass mother? Come on, bro. It got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist, so it never aired. So we have, like, when Cat Williams talk and people, truth tellers talk, we have receipts to everything we're saying. You're not Cat Williams. <laughs> You're not Cat Williams. Stop it. Stop it. You're not Cat Williams. She got on this thing thinking that she was going to be like Cat Williams. How many views does this video join got? That's how that whole thing got started. Okay? It's family. My husband is my family. Yeah. Now, you babies that are really good with this internet, through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me through the years. I never knew me. I never knew D.L. Higley had a problem with me. But when Cass said they all a group, 
He forgot to put D.L. Hughley in the group. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying. Stop it. You're not. Cat Williams said specifically, if, if you if you watch that interview, Modi, Cat Williams said, I'm not having no slander on D.L. Hughley. He said that. He's saying he forgot to add him in the group. Nah, Slim, I, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I'm not hearing a lot of people say they had problems with D.L. Hughley. I'm be honest with you. I'm not hearing a lot. I don't even like D.L., but I'm just saying, I haven't heard a lot of people say they have problems with him. I've heard people say, say that Monique is not the easiest person to be around sometimes. That's why, I mean, isn't it true that her, I think her son don't bang with her? Her son don't even bang with her, son. That's a problem. I think she spoke on that and said that, oh, the reason my son don't bang with because I was working hard. I was working hard. Man, F out of here, man. There's a lot of people that work hard. LeBron works hard, but I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure his son loves him. Wants to hang out with his son and everything. Like I mean, his son wants to hang out with his dad. F out of here, Slim. You the problem, Slim. This girl keep going on stuff, complaining, complaining, complaining. She is the problem. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'm going to see you. Mm -mm. I'm going to see you. I didn't go on nobody's show. I didn't say nothing to nobody, but I knew the time would come that I would see him. We were scheduled to do a show in Los Angeles. I was the headliner of that show. His name was on it, then his name came off. I didn't question it, but I knew I'm going to see him, mm. right? Eventually. Okay, now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. D.L. Hughley posted a memo. Now, when you signed your deal for the Ravens, did you sign a contract or a memorandum? I signed a contract. You see how you say that? Like anybody that knows good business, you signed. Sign the memo was saying, this is what I would like. Right. But the contract is saying, this is what, what it, it is. is. Okay? Yeah. For those of you guys who are curious on the memorandum that she's talking about and stuff, here it is right here. As you guys can clearly see, um, D.O. Hughley, 100% headline. <laughs> You feel me? And also, if you look, you will see um, where it says additional provisions. You see lineup D.O. Hughley closing. Monique's name is right before that. I don't know if something with the club promoter. Maybe they there is some confusion with the club promoters or something like that. She needs to be mad at the club promoters, not him. Because let's be real. And let me, let me show you guys the schedule, too. It shows the schedule for that time, too. Showing D.O. Hughley is the last person. John Adams is the one that, you know, introduces him. You'd have to be somewhat delusional to actually believe that Monique would be the one that would headline if D.L. Hughley is there. Let's keep it a band. I don't think D.L. Hughley is funny. Both of them equally are just not funny to me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if I had to pick one, if I was thinking like somebody or, or rather wondering who would be the headline, I would think it would be D.L. Hughley over Monique. Y'all not going to try to gaslight me, try to fake to me like y'all really be out here watching and checking for Monique. Y'all can't tell me that, bruh. I'm sorry. Stop lying. Got a memo to our community, and that touched me a little different because I was saying, "Why would you lie to our babies?" Because now they're thinking, if they send somebody a memo, that's what they're supposed to get. Okay? I was contractually signed to go as the headline. Right. You mean you go last? Dio Hughley didn't come into the building until 9:30. Now, contractually, I said I have to be on stage by 930 because if the show starts at eight, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the Correct. audience. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me because now you're here and I'm going to say it to you. Mm -hmm. And I said some things on that stage that I said he was cowardly. And some folks said, how could you say that? How could you do that? And then I posted some things to say, this is what I meant. See, you came after my husband. And when you had a chance to fix it, when you had a chance to say, Mo. When the hell did he come for your husband? Am I confused? Can somebody explain? When did, she, when did he come for her husband? Wasn't, did she say that he wasn't there to the fact that she had to call him? You know, yo, <laughs> this joint is trip. Like, hold on, she had to call. He wasn't there. So what are you? What are you talking about right now, man? This is. 
how can y'all not see that she's the problem, y'all? <laughs> I don't know. How can y'all not see that she's the... All right, let's keep going. Down like that. Right. You told me it is what it is. And until he's brave enough and courageous enough to say this is what really happened, y'all. Y'all have never known me to be no shit starter. Folks ain't never known me to go over and kick a sandwich out of somebody's hand that's hungry. But That's cap. That's cap. You're starting stuff right now. You you literally starting stuff right now. I haven't heard DL talk about this and God knows how. You're literally starting stuff right now. You just brought and you brought it up unprovoked. You just brought him up unprovoked. <laughs> it's like, son, you're starting stuff right now. Son. And it, this is so petty. This situation is so petty. It wasn't that deep. Oh, would you rather question? Are you serious? <laughs> and people defending this joint, son. This is crazy. What people do know is if you kick me, damn if I ain't going to kick you back. Right. Because that's fair play. Right. So there was one left out the pack. And when you have people that continually don't take accountability, that's why you see us in the state of affairs we're in. Yeah. I'm a firm believer, Mo, that everybody don't play the same. And someone once told me, what is joke to you is death to someone else. What is joke? That's why we don't play with people's families. No. When we had the Monique show, the radio show, listen, you can't come on here and speak ill of no one because we don't play like that because we know how this business works. Right. So when you allow that to happen. Man, she's wild, bro, because I don't know if y'all remember a few years back. She was talking big, spicy stuff about this guy, D.L. <laughs> Hughley and his, the daughter and everything like that. And she was going in from a would you rather. She 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 held that would you rather question to going and then talking about the whole situation. Saying I think she said something like he watched his daughter get like, you know, essayed in front of him or something like that. Something like that. I'm not sure she was she was going in. She was saying some bad stuff about this guy DL, man. It's crazy when you think about it. All that beef came from a would you rather question. She's hard to work with, guys. <laughs> she's she's hard to work with. This is sick. What do you think is gonna come back your way? What do you think? And DL Hughley, please no brother, we still love you. Just take accountability for it. And we move forward. She's nuts. She's nuts. Forward. I remember reading something about the uh, about the situation in Detroit. I didn't know the the depth of the magnitude of it. I, I remember reading something about a memo about I, I guess it's an addendum that was added on. But the contract is the contract. The contract is the contract. And what happens is because of the messenger, it was easy to pile on. Mm -hmm. It was easy to pile on. And then when you have our some of our black folk that go sit in front of a white man and speak ill of their people, I'm like, y'all, what are we doing? What are we doing? What enough, en uh, enough. I hate this. I hate this thing that people, black people, specifically black women, like to do. I'm like, oh, you're gonna do that as a black man? Oh, oh, so anytime I hear somebody say something like, oh, this is a black person or this, I just, I just shut down. I shut down. I stop listening. I stop listening because I feel like you're almost saying that. So we can't say nothing just off the strength that you are a black person. If a white person or any other race says anything, they can't say anything because they're not black. But then when a black person says something, you can't say anything because you're black. You're not supposed to be saying anything. So basically, you just don't want to be held accountable for anything. That's basically what you're saying jokes and i think at this point monique is delusional bro like i'm still i still don't understand what makes her think like in what world would she really be like that the, the headline who's checking for monique can somebody tell me when she was complaining about the netflix show who was checking for monique y'all weren't checking for monique when dave chappelle left to africa everybody was like damn only when dave chappelle was coming back blah, 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 say. monique been gone no one even knew what the hell monique's been up to no one cared no one was like, yeah, I wonder, let's check up on Monique. Let's keep it a band, guys. None of the queens of comedy nobody was checking for right now. Let's let's keep it a stack. This is this is blasphemy. What are we doing? What what are we coming to that we're gonna sit in front of this white man? I can't even say his name. I refuse. Everybody know who he is. We sit in front of him and we just let this man say any and everything about us, and then we go right in with him. That now see that to me is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And y'all babies. It's so crazy to me that she's talking about you went to a white guy who she's clearly talking about DJ Vlad and talked about. But now you now you're going against a, to a black guy. 
you're, you're, you're airing your grievances. I understand you're saying, like, oh, you're keeping it against black. You're talking bad about another black person, which I feel like, I mean, come on now. I, I feel like you're being a hypocrite. And then you're showing, you're not even saying DJ Vlad's name. That's crazy. Why are you not saying, say his name, say his name. You don't want to speak on the white man's names. <laughs> like, say his name, bro. It seems like you're showing him respect by trying to keep his name out. No, put his name in, right? Come on now. And y'all babies that's good with this little computer, don't take my word. You can just go through the years of this cat just running his mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's like, stop doing that because what are we saying to the babies coming behind us? When I hear Brother D. L. Hughley say, with that Netflix special, I just accepted anything. Whatever they gave me, these are not my words, they're his. Right. Well, that's how you do business. I'm not mad at you accepting anything. Right. Why are you mad at me saying I won't accept anything? Right. Because you're delusional. You're delusional. You think you're worth more than you really are. You're not there. You're delusional. Like I said, no one was checking for Monique. Even now, her Netflix special came out. The reviews are booty cheeks. Saying she cursed too much. She wasn't funny. These are Monique's. Some of these people are big Monique fans. Some people left good reviews and said, listen, it wasn't that funny, but I love Monique. It was cheeks. She's not funny. She was funny on the podcast. I'm not going to cap. She's funny on the podcast. I love the podcast. But she's not really that funny. Let's keep it real. She's delusional, bro. Oh, she gave me, I can't believe they gave Amy Schumer that money. Amy Schumer was hot. She was probably the hottest female comedian at that time. They gave her the money what it was worth. They, give, giving her the money was set money on fire. You might as well burn the money. Worthless. Hence, and they proved their point. Your Netflix joint bombed. It was terrible. So they were right. You were wrong, Slim. Come on now. You would think that, okay, now that I have this, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to show all the naysayers were wrong. And I'm really like that. I'm really hilarious and everything. No. And you stunk it up. F out of here. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. It's like people were judging me. I was hearing people. Shannon, okay. I didn't know we had so many tender people in our group. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know we had so many tender <laughs> love. The nerve of this. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many tender people and I, I wouldn't want to be on the front line with these tender people. Where it's like, oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't. But is what I said the truth? Is what I said the truth? No, I didn't put no, no sugar on it. Right. It was shit. Right. And I didn't try to make it taste good. We got to stop running away from what is real and we run into fantasy. And that's how come we keep staying where we sit. That was nuts. <laughs> that was nuts. Well, the guy D.O. Hughley, he didn't take kindly to this. So he definitely came out and had a <laughs> an interesting response. Well, Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um... So Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much and gain weight unless every crunch you do has got captain in front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she says she got off, she called me. Monique did, and she said I was very dismissive, like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints, I listened to her, and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. It's, it's also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a fucking liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking shit about some uh, alleged contract dispute we had. 
Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even bought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit out and, t and told the world that I allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me. The lying motherfucker. She knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren, because nobody fucks with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real, except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay? And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies, not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spent as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet and warm to people, except when she's using it to butter somebody up to get something. There's a reason why everywhere she go, shit starts. Everywhere she goes. How is it that nobody fucks with you? Not even your family. How do you? Well, I was on the road getting it. I get it every goddamn week. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. Because all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you're fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. It's sad. There's an old adage that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. As you can see, the story is a little bit different the way he says it. And um, like I said, my bias is coming out. I believe him before I believe her. Right. But I guess this is unfair to even say that. Right. Because. Uh, I mean, he pretty much was low key vindicated. Right. How was he vindicated? Well, she came out with an apology video um, because <laughs> I mean, at, at this point, but I, I feel like you should be able to tell that she was just, you know, full of BS. But let, let me play the video real quick. We wanted to address first and foremost our brother, D.L. Hughley. Mm. And we are firm believers on what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. So we got to start off by saying there was an inaccuracy as it regards Monique saying that there was a, cis, a cease and desist that was given to DL to shut it down. Mm -hmm. What had taken place to be accurate was after Monique spoke to Brother DL on that conversation, Brother DL said, what? Well, after we spoke on that conversation, when we hung up that phone, the last thing he said was, it is what it is. And I said, DL, then we're going to have to get our attorney involved. That's the last thing me and DL Hughley said on that conversation. And after having that conversation with Monique, we went and got our attorney involved, Attorney Anderson. At the time, there were some emails that were transferred back and forth between his side and our side, and it escalated to a point when we had our attorney on the email, whereby then finally DL said that he would scratch the interview. Yes. So it was inaccurate that a cease and desist had to be given. However, that was the next step, and that's what Monique remembered because when I discussed it with her, we said that would be the next step. But to DL's credit, at that moment, when it had escalated, that's when he decided to shut it down. However, that is a bit different from how it seemed to have been communicated, whereby on the phone they were having a conversation and it was kumbaya, though he never used those words kumbaya. Mm -hmm. It did not end with her being under the impression that this was going to be resolved and shut down. So we wanted to make that clear out of love and respect for Brother DL. And despite all the commentary that he gave, 
With all the it. with all the crunches she be doing, the I, captain's in the front. I do. And I do. Tell her. I'm a sneak snacker, baby. And she doesn't sneak <laughs> when she snacks. Okay. Hey. Oh, but no, no, no. It's not finished. I mean, D.O. Hughley, <laughs> he, he, he had to come back. He had to come back and speak on it because he was just like, hey, listen, I can hear what y'all saying, but I got to let this off my chest. And I'm so happy he did. All right. I, I, I'm taking time to respond to Monique again. She made another greasy ass video with her daddy. Um, we kind of relitigating some of the stuff she said on Club Shay Shay, where she talked about how she was on the show and somebody, you know, they played a game, would you rather? And I guess she felt like they insulted her husband's sexuality, which is interesting because she can always talk shit about everybody else's sexuality. But I guess her husband's sex was like, he's off limit. But a hit dog will bark unless his mouth is full. But she talked about, well, she didn't actually call her lawyer. Who the fuck would be afraid of your lawyer? Your lawyer, you mean the lawyer that did your contract? The law, that lawyer, the lawyer from the firm of Negro, Negro, Negro from Ghetto, Got Him and Gone, that lawyer? Who the fuck afraid of him? He couldn't get your name right on a ticket. He gonna get it right on a, on a legal document. It didn't happen because we decided it shouldn't happen. We didn't, you didn't need to, because we respect people. We don't have to do things for, t for, for clicks. They took it off because you asked me to, because I respected you at the time. You also talked about how I um, disrespect you on so many platforms, uh, but you have yet, you have this impeccable memory where you can tell to the degree, well, who did what to you and why and what happened, where you were, but you can't pull up one time on any platform that I said anything about you at all because you know you're lying. You got that piece of paper and that big ass memory, but you can't pull one up. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I would, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this milieu with you. Almost anybody. So I would suggest anybody out there, you could say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. You talked about how um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit, they weren't when you talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whipped and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. But let's do this. Let's decide that you will treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know them. You also intimated that I was coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman has to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. Can your old man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now. Uh-huh and everything. Because it ain't like he does anything else. But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special... As you did, arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. You beg for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid, that they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you would argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. I said it. You, if you spend half of your time doing, as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy six next to you, that daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't do, do what you never do. Write a fucking joke. So as you can see, when you see stuff like that, it makes you wonder, like, how much of what she's saying is actually true, right? It seems like she might have been just lying or maybe she's so delusional. She's seeing things a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like she thought that she deserved the money for the Netflix special. I don't care how many awards you win. Um, you know, I'm going to clap it up for you. Congratulations. I think that's a great thing that you're able to win all these awards. Right. It shows that you're a great actress. Right. And no one can take that away from you. But at the end of the day, money rules everything. Right. If you're not able to bring in the draw, 
if you're not able to bring in all that money, right, the views, the looks, they're not going to pay you. It doesn't matter. I'm hearing everybody keep saying that, oh, man, we're getting underpaid. No, it's like the WNBA. Those women are talented, right? They can play ball. But at the end of the day, they don't get enough viewership. So since you don't get enough viewership, you're not going to get paid. We're not giving you sympathy dollars, right? She won the lawsuit, right? Or she didn't win the lawsuit. She settled. They settled out of court. Uh, she settled out of court with Netflix. Now she's bragging like, oh, yeah, I did it. I think um, Charlemagne and God came out and apologized and everything, which I still feel like he shouldn't have apologized. He was right. You didn't deserve that money. Just because you settled out of court. That doesn't mean that you were right. People who understand how it works and with, with lawyers, everything like they'll basically just tell you straight up like, listen, man, um, this person is not worth our time right now. You're going to spend more money fighting this. She'll just just settle and just cut your losses. And that's what happened. All right. Granted, they gave her a joint on Netflix. Like I said, the Netflix special was terrible. A lot of y'all haven't even watched it. Right. A lot of y'all haven't even watched it. Anybody who's complaining, tell me, did you enjoy this special? You can't because you didn't even watch it. You know why? Because you didn't care to watch it. Because you didn't really care about Monique. So let's stop faking and pretending like you do. Some of y'all probably hearing this like, she got the Netflix special? Like, exactly. That's how irrelevant she is to y'all. Let's keep it a band. It's how everybody try to pretend because she says sweet babies and everything. Nah, let's keep it real. She's not who she thinks she is right and i think she's like she's not on cat williams level um like even her vi- her views on this club shay shay one is not on the level of cat williams i think as the recording of this video she's at 7.7 in two days don't get me wrong that's a lot of views but i'm pretty sure let me tell you in the mind of monique i know she was thinking that she was gonna match cat williams i'm telling you right now i'm telling you she saw cat williams get that blow up she was like oh shit i'm, I'm, I'm gonna jump on that as well but i honestly don't believe that you know she's there she's she's not there and as you can see in the views people not they don't even care to watch the thing like everybody was like yo we gotta watch cat wins monique's gonna come up uh uh, we'll get around to it (laughs) we'll get around to it but there's gonna be people coming up bad enough bad enough for her saying oh yeah we're all team monique and blase blase you watched her stand up tell me tell me uh tell me a monique joke tell me a monique joke Tell me, tell me uh, uh, one of those Monique jokes from one of her stand-ups from all through her career. Tell me one or two or three jokes that you're like, yeah, this was hilarious. Yeah, oh, my God. You'd be saying at the dinner parties and stuff, right, at the round table. Tell me. I want to hear the jokes. You could do that for Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy, you know what I'm saying, Richard Pryor. You, you, you can come up with Dave Chappelle. Shoot. I could, I could come up with some just hilarious jokes. Keep it a stack with you. I'm just keeping it real. You feel me? Just hilarious to me is actually hilarious, though. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So, hey, please tell me some jokes. Tell me some jokes that you guys remember from Monique. Tell me. I want to hear. The best thing that happened to Monique was her being on a Parkers, bro. She made the show good. I'll say that. Like, you got to give her her flowers when it comes to that. Her acting skills are great. Hence why she won the awards. But if you're not, it don't matter. You win the awards for acting. You don't win the awards for bringing in money. Let's just be real. You don't bring, you don't get the awards for bringing in money. It's just, it's, 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 it's sad that, you know, that is really like this. And some people can't see. I, I saw people even getting mad at D.L. Hughley for coming back and trying to defend himself, which is nuts. Which is absolutely nuts. If he stays quiet, y'all going to say, oh, he's staying real quiet. Something's wrong with him. But if he defends himself, it's like, oh, look, hit dog will holler. What do you want him to do? <laughs> you want her to just go out here and spew lies? You want her to go out here and spew lies, man? Is some of the stuff that she's saying probably in the whole interview true? Probably. I know she said the whole thing with... Um, with Tyler Perry, the recording already came out and everything. I mean, come on. I mean, that wasn't somewhat true. But some of the other stuff, I'm just like, what is really going on? What's really good? I think she's just really, really sensitive. And she has a God complex. That, hence why her son don't bang with her. I don't give a damn. I don't know this lady. <laughs> so when she's like, oh, you got to keep family out of it. I don't give a damn, Slim. Yo, 
your son don't bang with you. That's crazy. That's nuts. And just like D.L. Hughley said, man, he had a big, busy schedule. His schedule was probably a lot busier than hers. And I believe it. Let's be real. I believe it. <laughs> Why is it he's still close with his family? Interesting stuff, man. That's all I'm gonna say. It's very, very interesting stuff, man. Uh, Monique, I, I, I hope the best for her. But uh, I just feel like uh, the soft talk and everything. She's not gonna fool me. I know, uh, I know uh, a faker when I see one, man. I'm not gonna fall for it just because she's a, a, a lady and everything. I'm just gonna fall for the little oh, soft voice and yeah, yeah, yeah. She talks like a church aunt and everything. No, no. We all know those church aunts that talk nice and everything. But when things get real, they they turn up and. When you're not looking, they talking bad behind your back. <laughs> so let's just keep it. Let's just keep it real, man. I ain't falling for that. But that's all I got to say on this, man. I appreciate y'all. I love you. Peace and blessings, ugly mofos. And I'm out.